Well, it's that time of year again. Fall, my favorite time of year. I love everything about it. Pumpkin pie, apple cider, banana bread, pumpkin bread, and of course, the fall decorating. Today, I'm gonna to show you several projects to decorate your home that are fast and easy. Hi, my name's Angela Davis, and I am the 4M Quilter, where I share, care, and create with you. Welcome, welcome, and if you're new to my channel, thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoy. So the first thing I did was, I went to my stash, and I pulled out two focus fabrics. That would be this one, the large floral, and this one with the cardinals. Now, the thought was, I'm going to pull other fabrics that will complement those fabrics. So, of course, I went to the orange. I went to another fall small leaf pattern, a neutral with a, a general all over leaf pattern, a gold with a flower, and of course, so on and so forth. Another leaf pattern, a solid, a plaid, a green tone on tone, and a calico brown. I used the two focus fabrics, the one with the cardinals and the one with the large flowers to bring out the other fabrics for fall. I didn't necessarily use all the fabrics, but I wanted to have a variety available. This first project I'm gonna show you is a mug rug. You need five fabrics, and this one I made so that it would finish right around five inches, but you can make this larger if you want. It must be a square. So you need five fabrics. You need one for the backing, and this background fabric I happened to luck out at the thrift store and I found this beautiful pumpkin fabric. It was a tablecloth a lot of it and then I chose four fabrics to go on top so there's my backing and here are my four fabrics and once you get them all cut out into five and a half inches leave the backing the way it is and then you're going to iron the other fabrics in half just like this and then what you're going to do is you're going to line up the raw edge with the raw edge of your first fabric so that the fold is in the center. And I have this one as my reference, okay? So next, I'm gonna line up, sorry, I'm gonna line up my maroon what I do is I do one as a reference and I don't stitch that. I keep it pinned so that I get all the other ones prepared so that they all match because it's very easy to get this turned around. So once I get the design in, in the order that I want, I pin it and then I use that as my guide. Like I said, get your first one in place, pin it, and then get all your other ones ready and pin that in place. And then you're going to stitch all the way around the outside edge a quarter inch. You're going to clip the curves like that. And then you're going to turn it inside out. And you can make four of these as a gift. You can make six of them as a gift make as many as you like and give them as gifts for a hostess gift, you know, a party gift, a birthday gift. They're just lovely, lovely to make. Little mug rugs. And you only need five and a half inch squares. So it's very fat quarter friendly. If you want to buy a layer cake and cut up a layer cake to do this project, it's very, very friendly. It's also very scrap friendly. 
That's project number one. Project number two, I'm gonna show you, and this is very simple. And this project is a lot of fun and very easy. You take a hand towel that you've already purchased, pick out a coordinating color, um, strip of fabric, and this was two and a half inches. I turned it under on all four sides, and then I just top stitched. And this is wonderful to use as guest towels when company comes. Use it again as a hostess gift if you're going to a party. Um, um, it's still time to have cookouts this time of year, bonfire, that sort of thing. And on this one, I added, oh, I got a little thread there. On this one, I added some applique leaves to give it more interest. So again, I chose my strip and added that on, and then I cut out my own leaf pattern. I elongated that a little bit so that it would be a little more prominent. And I used um, iron-on interfacing. And what I did was I drew, I put the iron-on interfacing right sides together, I drew my leaf pattern, and then here I stitched right on that line here. And you trim less than a quarter inch. You get right in there and trim. And you also clip those inside curves. And then you take a snip on this iron-on interfacing. Now remember, the iron-on interfacing is right sides together. You pull these apart and you cut a hole and then you turn that right side out. And then when you do, you need to use a stiletto or a little craft pointer like I have here. I have two of them. has a little bit of a curved edge so you do that to try to get the initial fabric and the bulk pushed out and then you go back and use the pointy side now be careful because this iron-on interfacing is, is a lighter weight iron-on interfacing you can poke through it very quickly because I've done that it's very simple you can use a leaf pattern that you found in a book you can create one of your own and you just put right sides together, your fabric and your iron-on interfacing, trace the leaf pattern, stitch right on that line, trim, snip the inside corners, and then turn it right side out. And then iron it on, like that, and then I just did a little blanket stitch. And if you're not comfortable drawing your own pattern, Look through your books. For example, here's a leaf pattern that I could have used. It's a very nice leaf pattern that I could have traced. Or, did I have another one? Oh yes, I did. Or this one. Could have traced this one if I wanted to. So there's lots of opportunities to trace leaf patterns. You can even download an image for a coloring page and draw a leaf pattern that way. So again, this is just a wonderful little gift. Doesn't take a lot of time. You can use scraps if you want. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful little, little gift or to decorate your home, your kitchen, the guest bathroom. They're just lovely. With a little bit of fabric and iron-on interfacing. Okay. The other project that I want to show you are these fabric pumpkins. And this is a project that's wonderful to do 
uh, when you're with a friend or your mom or your aunt and get out that hot glue gun, you know, and you're stuffing. Cut a circle and I started out using one of my dinner plates, but I realized it made a very small pumpkin. So I ended up using one of my large uh, round uh, platter plates, like a serving plate. And I started there and I cut out a round, one big round circle. And then I just use my embroidery needle and some embroidery floss and I hand stitched all the way around. You gather it tight and before you stitch it, you stuff it. And then you can add this, these are little antique clothes pins. You can add a twig from your yard. Um, you can add a cinnamon stick, you know, whatever you like. And you stitch back and forth around these folds. And then you wrap that embroidery floss around and then you tie it off. And then from there, you get out that hot glue gun. You know, you add your leaves, you add some twine. I have here a little pumpkin. You know, get out your, you know, your fall floral and your fall leaves and just start snipping and have just a lot of fun with it and stuff them as much or as little as you want. And those are a lot of fun to make to decorate your mantle or your kitchen or your dining room table. Over here, I have a wall hanging that I created. And when I started out, I realized afterwards that there's a much easier way to make the corners on this pumpkin. Hold on, let me trim this. Um, than the way I initially did it. So I'm going to explain to you the easy way. Okay. So here's the basic pumpkin unit. And what I did originally was I cut out a rectangle, two small rectangles, and then I made four half square triangles. Okay. That takes more time. It's easy, but it takes more time. The easy way to do it is I cut out, I wanted it to be 12 and a half inches raw so that it would finish to 12 inches, my pumpkin, not the stem. What you can do is cut out your square, 12 and a half inches square, and then cut out your background, two and a half inches, draw a line down the center, put those four squares in each corner, stitch on the line, stitch on the line, trim it, and then fold back. That's the easier way to do it. Don't do it my way that I did the first time around. And then all you have to do is decide how tall you want your stem to be. My stem finishes at two and a half inches, and I believe it's an inch and a half wide. And then I took two strips the same height as the stem, sewed them on each side, and then positioned that stem where I wanted it. Do I want it right down the middle, like this one, or do I want it off to the side? And on this one, I wanted it off to the side. And on these side background strips, I overcut them a little bit, so I just had to trim them down. And then I added a little border on top here. And on this one, as you can see, I ended up doing half square triangles along the top. I did a little one inch border here of the background fabric, a one inch border of the green all the way around. I had to add loops because of the rod that I have hanging in my living room where I'm going to hang it. And for the filler, I just used some scrap flannel that I had. And then I just machine quilted it.
So again, very simple, um, easy, basic. And that's my second one. I'm going to make probably a table runner with that one. Okay, my last project is this table runner. Now this has got to be the easiest one yet. And this is fat quarter friendly. So what I did was it's two colors and it's I believe 18 inches wide here by 20 inches here and I decided how wide I wanted my top border to be and how wide I wanted my side border to be. I cut out my leaves and these two leaves I believe I cut freehand but this one I believe I got out of a book and what I did was I used it's called easy easy press I think that's what it's called wonder under or easy press where you iron it on and then you peel it off and then you position it where you want it and then you iron it on and it sticks but when you do this um, because it has that raw edge it's not turned under you have to do a tight zigzag all the way around you can use matching fabric or you can use a contrasting fabric and then I just did some little decorative stitches in the center And you can make this as long or as short as you want. I just used a green that I happen to have pre-cut and this gold I already had and I thought the two of them together make just a very simple but elegant table runner. So there you have it, some fall projects. I hope you enjoyed this video and you know what to do. Give it a like and a thumbs up subscribe, click that notification bell to get more notices of when I post another video. Um, also on a side note, I've been working on a website to have my patterns available for you for sale. It's not live yet. I'm still working out some of the kinks, but I'll keep you posted. Thank you so much for joining me today. Grab that cup of cocoa or that cup of hot cider and enjoy your fall projects. Bye.